some of the other situations that you may have is what we call split delivery. And that's where an organization truly needs to use both different applications or both different suites. I'm deeply entrenched in the Microsoft technosphere for compliance purposes. I need to maintain my current Microsoft tenant and email for compliance. What is the best way to facilitate collaboration between Microsoft and Google Workspace? Okay, if you are unfortunate situation of having to work with both Microsoft and Google and you feel stuck in the middle, let's try and address how we can fix that. Now, there's many reasons someone might be stuck in hybrid land. Sometimes it is that you're part of a franchise group, the head franchisor runs Microsoft, you wanna run Google. And so what we've had is many customers in franchise groups come to us and say, hey, can I forward my Microsoft emails into the Google ecosystem? I wanna run a workspace ecosystem for my franchisee. And then let's just leave the head office's email as Microsoft and I'll run Google Workspace for ourselves. Another scenario is a large organization and there are specific roles that really wanna work with specific Microsoft tools. Usually that looks more like the organization is in the Google world and just a handful of people wanna use, for example, Microsoft Office. And that might be your CFO wants to use Excel or your legal team have software and that integrates deeply with Word. Sometimes you've got a particular user group and they just really, really, really want to use Outlook, right? And it's been a long time getting people off Outlook and into Gmail. These days, that one's less of a thing, but sometimes they're just not ready for technology change and they just really, really want to use their Outlook and it wouldn't be good for the business to try and force them to change. Now, some of the other situations that you may have is what we call split delivery. And that's where an organization truly needs to use both different applications or both different suites. It may be that you have a large corporate enterprise and you have different units or different groups inside that enterprise and different units and groups are either exclusively using Workspace or exclusively using Microsoft. And usually this happens where there's been like a merger or an acquisition and one half of the business is deeply entrenched in the Google way of doing things and another part of the business is deeply entrenched in Microsoft. And for both of those parts of the organization, it's not a good business case to switch, right? It's just too ingrained and there wouldn't be any benefits like the cost wouldn't change and the pain of the change, the pain of the hurting uh, would be way more than trying to make the two work nicely together. There are many different ways that you can integrate and have the different apps interoperating within themselves or between them. And it starts at right at the very basics in kind of like small business land where maybe you just need to forward some emails because you're that franchisee and the franchisor wants to dictate that they're using Microsoft but you really want to use Google. Or in a large enterprise, you may have complete hybrid mail delivery setups where either Google or Microsoft is receiving all of your mail and forwarding on email to the alternative email provider and the alternative workplace productivity suite based on their particular mailbox and which mailbox that falls in. Is it a Microsoft mailbox or is it a Google mailbox? If you're in an organization where the technology changes extend to hardware, Maybe you have some Chrome devices that you're running, but you also have some Macs and you also have some Windows machines as well. And you want to do directory management. Okay, let's say we've got one directory in Microsoft and we want to have the Google users deployed. Every time we deploy a username and password in the Microsoft directory, we want to automatically deploy a Google user account. Now you can configure single sign-on and directory synchronization between a Microsoft directory. It might be on Azure. It might be on an Active Directory controller. And we can synchronize that to the Google directory. There's even third-party directory tools that you can use and third-party identity providers, which will actually give you the option to have a centralized directory that could even push to Microsoft or to Google, depending on where in that organization that person is. Let's wind it all the way back and let's start with the basics with small business and then I'll work my way back up into the enterprise as well. Now, if you're a small business and for some reason you still need to use some of the Microsoft tools, you want to use Google for your primary email delivery or your primary workplace productivity tool, but you've got to use some Microsoft. In most cases, that's as simple as subscribing to Google Workspace, having that as your primary, and then you just buy an Office subscription and that Office subscription comes with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. And if you want to connect an Outlook account to your Google Workspace account, that works just fine. 
my preference not to use Outlook, and we've got many other videos on the channel covering that specific question. But if you wanna synchronize it to your Google world, well, you've actually got a really great plugin for Microsoft Outlook these days, which synchronizes natively all of your Google email into Outlook. Now, the search is still not amazing, and you miss out on all the other cool features that you get online with Google. But at least you get your email, your folders, your sent, your received, and any changes you make to dragging an email out of your inbox and into one of those folders in the Outlook on your local desktop is gonna to reflect to your phone on your Gmail app. It's gonna to reflect to Gmail online and in the web. And so effectively, everything is gonna be in sync. The next thing, if you wanna use Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and save those files into your Google Drive, you can save them in their native format. So in the native Microsoft format, they can be saved into your Google Drive. And in the old days, it would automatically try and convert them into a Google document format. And we all know that if you convert from Word to Google or vice versa, it's not always perfect. It's usually far from perfect. So for the most part, a small business that has Google there for your ecosystem as your primary ecosystem and Microsoft as a kind of add-on, it works fine. Now, what about the other way around? What if you wanna use Microsoft for your primary email delivery in a small business and you wanna use some of the Google tools? That tends to happen right before customers come to us and do a full migration, right? Usually for the first year or so of starting to get their hands dirty with Google Documents, their staff will just be using them naturally with Gmail addresses. Now that of course creates a pretty big security risk and we don't really want that to be happening because your company data is on someone's personal Gmail account and that could go wherever. So what do we need to do? Well, we can, even if we're running Microsoft as our primary email provider, set up a Google Workspace account and use our business domain name for the users on that Workspace account. Now, what I'm about to suggest here actually doubles your bill for your email productivity suite because you need to pay for your licenses for Microsoft Office 365 for your mailboxes, and you also need to pay for each user that's using Google Workspace if you want them to use folders, files, and the Google document formats, and you wanna be able to protect all of those email addresses. Now, how do we set it up? It's as simple as registering for Google Workspace account. You verify the domain using your DNS, but you don't change your MX records or your mail records in your email, so you basically just never take it live. You verify to Google that yes, we own this domain name, and you can set up users with those email addresses under that domain name, but the actual emails won't ever go into those mailboxes. But your team will be able to make use of Google Docs, Google Sheets, and the rest of the Google ecosystem, and you will have a secured login for each one of your staff members that they can now use to access services with their new Google identity. Moving up to mid-level or mid-market and enterprise companies, there's some deeper integration that you might be looking for. Something like, how can we get our teams talking to each other on chat? And Google have recently announced a third-party integration, which will actually provide interoperability between Teams chat users and Google chat users. That means that if you have two parts of your company and they're running on different Microsoft and Google setups, well, they can actually talk to each other. Next up, you're probably gonna start thinking about meetings. And Google has a number of third-party integrations which will allow Google Meet to connect to Zoom, WebEx, and other meeting providers. It will also connect to Microsoft Teams as well in some instances. Now, that's not one I've set up myself personally, but the tools are out there. Businesses also come to us and say, hey, what's the best way for us to manage our directory? Should we have Google as the master? Should we have Microsoft as the master for identity? Honestly, that's probably gonna come down to what other tools do you want to integrate with Google or Microsoft for your directory? If you wanna use something like Okta for identity management and manage permission and access to lots of different technology tools across your technology stack, well, that's gonna come down to what has the best interoperability with either hooking this up with Microsoft or hooking this up with Google. If you have other third-party single sign-on tools, like maybe you wanna have everyone using Canva in the business and you want them to log in with their business identity, have a look at what features can I get if they log in with a Google account versus with a Microsoft account. Now, finally, we come to devices. 
Obviously, if you're a Microsoft device heavy organization, it might make sense to go with Active Directory. If you have a large user base, like more than 100 employees, you're probably gonna be wanting to set policies on the individual desktops to manage things like security, what your users can and can't do, and maybe you even wanna change the background of everyone's computer to be your company logo. Well, all of this can easily be done in Microsoft Active Directory. And although you can connect your Microsoft machines and your Mac machines to your Google identity and use Google as an identity provider and a security provider for those end desktop computers, obviously you're not going to get anywhere near the customization or anywhere near the control capabilities as you would get if you've got a Microsoft computer for your staff and a Microsoft management system for your directory. Click the link down below if you'd like a free consultation. If you liked this video, we've got plenty more on the channel covering this topic and much, much more.